Hey all, good to see you. I am back again sharing a little little bit, uh, a little bit of news here, uh, something interesting that I had come across. There's so many interesting things that I comes into my life and I enjoy sharing. And um, this one in particular is about somebody who has been, uh, died and um, went to heaven. And it's a long story. I can't remember. It's been, it's been a little while since um, I've seen this, can't remember the name of the man, but I think they're putting it back on YouTube, and I think it's on one of the videos on a YouTube recent video, because <clears throat> it was that the Lord reminded me of that. But anyway, um, he was taken, um, he had an accident in his home, and he was taken up to be with the Lord, and he just shared some interesting things, but the point I wanted to make with you all is that... Um, we have a purpose and a reason, those of us that are truly born-again Christians. We have a purpose and a reason why we're here on this earth. And when he shared this story, I, I was just, um, I was, it really bore witness with me because I have really struggled so hard to make sure that I have accomplished all the things that I was called to accomplish. So it's another confirmation for me because the Lord had told me this. Um, when he had um, given me a dream, um, a dream uh, a number of years back, before anybody was even talking about the conditions of the world today, this was like just starting to happen, and I was um, in a dream, and I was sharing. Um, in this dream, I was, you know, taken into the world, and the Lord said, "It's not." I'm only just briefly going to real quick share this. I'm not going into any detail because that's not, I didn't want to share that dream today. But he took me back into the world and I says, how long, Lord, how long? Because I wanted to have full-time ministry. I didn't want to be working. That was the whole key to that video. I mean, to that um, dream that I had because I had been praying about this. And the Lord always answers my prayers. You know, he'll always answer your prayers if you are diligently seeking him and you don't give up. When you give up, the Lord knows you don't mean business. Sometimes you're going to stay focused on something for a while and not give up. I'm sorry to say that so many give up so easily and they just throw the towel in and they just, they just totally just can't, you know, can't stay focused on whatever it is that they're seeking for in their life and they just forget about it and they just drop it. Well, how does the Lord feel? He knows you don't mean business about it if you've dropped it and you're not following through with it. Um, so, yeah, you've got to follow through with the things that are serious in your heart that you want to have an answer. The Lord will answer you. If you're walking closely with the Lord, if you are one of His, if you are the remnant of the Lord God, if you are His child and you are His He's not going to leave you, forsake you. He's going to answer you. You've got to stay focused. It's just, you've got to do the work. You can't just, we can't play games with God. We can never play games with God. This is not a game. This is very, very serious business. And in the dream, I've always taken the Lord very serious. <laughs> I, I, I totally have the fear of God, which is the love of God. If you don't get that wrong. The fear of God is deep love of God and respect. True fear of God, that's the meaning of it. True respect and love that you would never do anything, ever, ever turn your back on him or do something that would cause that relationship that you have with him to be deterred or dejected or rejected or for God to see that your love is not truly 100% um, for him. And that you're in love with the world more. I don't want that ever to happen. So I take it very serious. So in the dream, he told me just for a little while longer, daughter, and I had to go back out in the world. And I had to continue to work again for a number, a few, not very long, but a number of years. And then I was really blessed to be able to do full-time ministry and dedicate all my time to really hands-on with people. It was wonderful. I was very thankful. But during that dream, the Lord um, 
took me back, and at the very last part of that dream, he took me to the throne room, and I was standing before him. I could not see him. I saw a cloudy mist, and I knew I was at the throne room. I could see just some of the arm of the throne room. It was glorious, and it was beautiful. Uh, it was no question. I, I just knew um, <laughs> God took me to the throne, and I was standing before him. And then he asked me this question. He says, have you done everything you called? I called you to do? That was the very last part of my dream because I was very concerned about doing what I wanted to do full time for him. But he said a little while longer and then I was leaving that area because it was very profane, very disgusting. The world had gotten at that time. It wasn't as bad, but it had gotten like it is now. It was very bad. And it was like, I could just describe it then as being in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was just like everywhere I turned, there was somebody just lunging and going for you and wanting to take you into their deceptions and their sin and uh, profanities and the disgusting things that we're seeing today. And the very last part of the dream, I'm skipping over a lot of little things, um, it was the end times. It was the very last of the last. <clears throat> And, excuse me, so he took me to the throne and he said, have you done everything I called you to do? And then I was taken back to the earth. And I was, I concentrated on the major part of that was, have you done everything I called you to do? In other words, while we're here, while we're waiting while we're watching, while we're waiting, while we're praying, while we're seeking, while we're devoting our time to him, are we doing the work that he has called us to do? Are we doing the will of the Lord? And this is not going to be a real long video. It'll be a short video. Just wanted to share with you that there's something that he's called. If you are a born-again Christian, you are serving God. And if you've been serving God for more than a year, now listen, the disciples, the disciples walked with the Lord three years and then the Lord left. He was resurrected and he appeared to them. And I'm going to read the words out of uh, the end of Mark. And of course, I think it's in Matthew too. At the very end, he gives instructions. And so I saw this video about this man who was taken to heaven. Uh, first, he was tormented by demons because he was headed for hell. And then he was rescued by the Lord because he called upon the name of the Lord. And so the Lord took him out of that situation. It was really horrible. It was a, quite, an, quite a, an interesting story, and it was very profound. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't think of his name right now. But he said, I am going to tell you why. He said, I brought you back into the, into the heavenlies. In other words, all of a sudden, the Lord appeared and angels appeared. And he was now gone from all the demonic because he called out to the name of the Lord. And then the Lord, um, he asked him, he said, why, Lord, am I going through all these things? And uh, why, what have I done? And he had been in church. He was doing all, um, you know, doing the things that he was describing through his video. It, took, it was a long video, but it was interesting. And, um, you know, I've heard a lot of videos similar to this, very similar, I'm sure maybe. Some of you have as well, but the what I want to mention today is that toward the end of the video, it just really um, captured my heart, and it made me just really, it really touched my heart, and I was feeling so sorry and so sad for what the Lord said, because people are not doing this. They're not doing this, and I, I see it all the time, and I have wondered what is going to happen to these people that are not doing so let me share what he said he said i've called you back and i've raised you back up from the dead he should have been dead he had a terrible accident and he was actually he died the lord took him and i shared just up to this point in the very last of this almost hour long video he shared with him only two percent only two percent of the people that say that they are christians only 2% are going to be taken up in heaven. And he said, reason, and he asked him why. What is with the 2%? He said, that's why I brought you back. 
he said, you have not, you have not done um, what I have required. And he wondered what that was, was that 2%. And he shared that they should be doing the work of the Lord, just like the disciples are. He gave them specific instructions, very specific instructions at the very end. And I'm going to read this. I don't have my best glasses on, glasses on right now, but I'm going to try to read this to you the best I can. <laughs> um, he goes on to say, um, and he said, said to them, go ye, take all the world and preach, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said that those that believeth and baptized shall be saved, and he shall be not damned. And he said to them, Signs shall follow those that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak in new tongues, and they shall And they shall take up serpents, and they will not um, be hurt. And he goes on to say, um, you will take up any deadly thing, and you will not be hurt. And then he goes on to say to them, and they will lay on the hands to the sick, and they shall recover. And then he said, after that, he said, um, he had spoken unto them. He responded unto them, and he said, lost it just a second and they went forth and preached everywhere and the Lord working with them they went out and preached everywhere three years in the Lord and they went out and preached everywhere and he goes on to say here confirming the word with signs following now, the other, there's another, there's all different, there's different ways the Lord shares this, but I'm reading the King James. And um, he said to the man, the reason why I brought you back, one of the reasons, he said, was that you have not been doing the things that I called you to do. And he said, what didn't I do? I was in church every week. I was, you know, there on Sunday and Monday and, I mean, Sunday and Wednesdays and Sunday night. And, um... He said, what, ha what, what, what did I go wrong? And he said, you didn't really do it with the right attitude and right motive. That was a better word. The motive of your heart was just to be working at getting these things for the Lord. Your heart, in other words, your motive was not right. The motive of the heart was not right. You were just doing what you were told to follow and do, but you never did what the Lord said, as I just repeated to you. They were just going to, he was just going to church on Sunday. He was reading the Bible occasionally. Um, but everything he did, the motive of his heart was not out of love and out of dedication and out of the love of Christ and the fear of God. I'm just saying all these other things. But the bottom line is that he said, these will not be with me because their motive was not correct. And <clears throat> when the Lord told him this, he went back to church and his whole attitude was changed. And he was in, um, I think he was. It's, it said he was still in a Baptist church, but they did not believe in the signs and the wonders or the healing or laying on hands. So they told him not to do it. He wanted to continue. And so this is just a little quick synopsis of something that I think we all should know is that we need to complete the work that Jesus left us to do. And what we need to realize, as hard as this is to say, I have to say it because I have experienced it myself, because I have been on fire for God from the very beginning, and I could never understand why other people 
were not as on fire as I was for the things of God. I noticed it. I had to back off some in some situations because I didn't know any better. Of course, as time went on, after I was newly, you know, in the very beginning, I kind of backed off a little bit thinking, oh, I'm being too, you know, too much for the, I, I guess I'm overdoing it. I guess I, I, I can't really be accepted in the church, uh, even though Jesus said this and Jesus said that in the Bible, I was not welcomed to be doing, oops, just lost my Bible passage, but that's okay. I think I've mentioned all that I want to mention. Um, so I kind of pulled back. And um, I noticed that I was different compared to all the other people. And I couldn't understand why all the others weren't doing like the Word of God tells them. And in fact, some people have said, well, we're not like you. Yeah, I'm not like you. Well, you know what? That was wrong. Because I was following what the Lord told me to do. The instructions that He gives us out of the Word of God, was to do all the things that Jesus did. And this is what I was about. I had one or two friends that were really involved in the things of God in the world. You know, like there was, I was very involved with the abortion clinics, council people, and in the early days, council people in the abortion clinics, when they came, I was in marches, you know, for abortions, because for a long time, that was really an important issue. And all of a sudden over the years, it's become like blasé. I'm so sorry to say that, but that's my experience because we, we used to do a lot of things to help people and, and, and we're taught a lot and we're just hearing this preached, but you're not hearing it anymore from the pulpit. And I'm, what I'm saying is this, is that this is going to come off pretty harsh, but I don't, I'm sorry. I've got to say it. You had better be in a church that is doing the work of the Lord. And they're putting Christ first and the blood of Jesus and the cross, the work at the cross. You better be in a church or you better be in a group or a Bible study or something or doing the work of God and you're just doing it yourself because God's called you to do it like you did me. I couldn't, t I, I couldn't do this any longer. I couldn't be in places where they did not accept the true word of God, even in the advanced good churches that I was going in. Um, I knew God was calling me out because I was confined and they were actually upset sometimes when they found out I was ministering. And sometimes they would find, somebody would say, oh, well, I got this flyer from so-and-so and, -so, and um, it's on so -and, and they'd say, the pastor would say, or the, whoever it was, Where'd, who gave you this? And she said, oh, this woman that comes to our church. And, you know, I was taught, have a covering, to have people you know, behind you and know those that labor among you and, you know, that type of thing. But it didn't work that way. It didn't work that way. They did not want me preaching. They didn't want me teaching. Um, they want you to stay in the building. And anyone that was doing it, if they found a flyer, and this happened to me, it's very sad. It's not of God. None of it is of God. But there's a lot worse things going on. And people are fumbling and they're not finding their way. I, and there's going to be an answering to all this. But anyway, I had to actually, I was called on a carpet a number of different times. number of different times. And told that you didn't, you can't do that here. You can't pros proselyte. I said, I'm not proselyting. That woman asked me for a flyer. And I am I going to tell her I don't want to proselyte? You can't come to my meetings? It was just crazy. It was just totally not of God, was not godly. They should have been encouraging those of us that were working for the things of God and going forward and going out in ministry, which was a very, very faith-filled life. It takes a lot of faith to step out. I've gone through a lot of things. I've gone through a lot of things walking out on faith that I had no help, no encouragement. I did it because I walked in the Lord's light and I knew I had to. And that dream that I had where the Lord said, if you've done everything I've called you to do. In other words, before the end comes, he's going to be watching. We need to be watching, waiting for the Lord. But he's watching until that last day, until he comes and gets us. Are we doing the work of God? Are we submitted to him? Are we totally in love with him and serving him the way he's called us? And how has he called us? 
I just read it to you out of the Bible. You can read it right. The last thing he said in Mark, I believe it is, and in Matthew. Read the last part of it. Just look it up and do a word study. We are called to follow. We are disciples of Christ, which means he is our teacher. We learn under him. How long do you want to stay in the church atmosphere and keep going to church every week? Keep going and getting pablum, getting milk. There comes a time when the Lord is saying to all of us, be about the business of the Lord. What have you been doing all this time? Getting caught up with the world, getting caught up with things that are of no effect, of no rhyme or reason, have nothing to do with the call of God. And you know something? You don't have to have, oh, I called you to do this ministry. You don't. Just follow the word of God and follow the heaviness that you feel in certain areas that you feel like you want to do it. Do it. Not everybody's going to be called to preach the word of God. I've been preaching the word of God for years and years. I've gone into the soup kitchens for years and years. I've done um, home meetings for years and years. I've been asked to preach in different churches, women's meetings, different things. I've done all that. I have um, done everything. I've tried to do everything that I have been called to do. And I just try to keep every um, I dotted and every T crossed in my life to stay focused on where he's called me. And I encourage you today. I encourage you to admire. Oh, I admonish you at the same time. What are you waiting for? How long is, will it take? Now, this is not for everybody, but a lot of you need to hear this. And I hope you're being touched by this and realize that we are to be about the Father's business. We are to be about the work of the Lord. We are to be about the things that he's called us to. This world is dying and going to hell. We need to be saving souls and bringing them into the kingdom of God. It's mandatory. It's what he gave the disciples to do after just three years. Do you know how many people I run into that have been in the church and have been walking with God and going to church every single day, I mean, every Sunday, and they're still not doing anything for the Lord? They just think that that's it. That's what they're just going to church. and that It's not about church. It's just a building. It's just a building. You're going there. To, we should be going there to be encouraged to be loved and have fellowship and then be encouraged to move on and go and do the work we've been called to do for the Lord, whatever that may be, and encouraged in that way. So if you're not going to a church or a place or a gathering where you're doing that, you need to just get out of that situation fast. This is this is long. Um, this message should have been preached long, long ago. It should have been coming by from the pulpit. But I'm, like I say, I'm sorry to say that a lot of the ministries all they're taught to do in seminary is to build a bigger church and to be in a big business. And as you can see today, a lot of the churches, these mega churches are falling. There's a lot of corrupt things going on. And I have been, I, I'm, I'm, I've had the witness for years. I've had the witness in my spirit for years that these big ministries, I just, I, I mean, occasionally I'll listen to some of their things and watch some of the things, but I don't always give to these big ministries. Uh -uh. I give where the Holy Spirit tells me to give. And when I give, I don't expect anything back in return. So many times, and that's why I did have a gift that I was giving um, for a while. Um, but, you know, I even stopped doing that myself um, because I didn't want people to give to me because they were getting something back. I just felt like that wasn't of God. I want people to give because they love God. They love God, and they want to give because they're being blessed by my ministry. They're being blessed by something that I've shared, some, something God has spoken to them through this ministry, some holiness, some purity, some correction, some admonishing, which means to help people go in the right direction. So I love you all, and I hope you've been touched by this message in some way and realize and, and maybe be corrected by some things in your life that you've not been, um, been taught, but that you will... Start going in the direction that God has called you to do. The two percent are going to go, but there's that's only ninety eight, and ninety eight percent are not going to make it. And it grieves the Lord. In that a conversation, the man said the Lord was so heavy and so sad because hell was not made for his children, and he he's broken hearted because his children have not gone the way that they should have gone. They have gotten caught up with the world, their family, their troubles, their bills, their houses. Well, you scale down then if you got too much and you can't pay, you just scale down. 
if your kids are problems or your family doesn't accept you. And I've gone through that with my life. My whole family was Catholic. And when I found the real truth of Jesus Christ, and not all about the saints and purgatory and all those different things, my life was totally changed. It was all changed from that moment on. And I was never the same. I gave my life to Christ and I was truly born again. And I was truly a new creature like 2 Corinthians 5.17 talks about. I was totally on fire for God. People didn't know what happened to me. My family couldn't figure it out. They never heard of such a thing. I'm not going to church anymore with us. You're not going to wear that thing on your head. You can't, you got to cover your head. You got to this, you got to, oh my gosh, I was out of all that legalism and all that horrible stuff that was not connected with the love of God, was just not connected with him. I love you all today, and I just want you set free. Father, in Jesus' name, please agree with me in prayer for this, for your loved ones, for your friends, for your life right now. Father, in Jesus' name, take me. Take me and change my life. Change my life, Father. Use me for your glory. Accept me in your kingdom. I receive Jesus Christ. I have, I have not been doing what I should be doing. I have not given my full heart to the Lord. I ask your forgiveness. I don't want to see the fires of hell in my life. I don't want to see it. I don't want to go through it. I want to be with you, Lord. Hell was made for the rebellious of God and the sinners and rebellious of God. You tell us as the, the word of God tells us, and you have told us that heaven was made for your people. Hell was not made for your people. It was made just for the rebellious and those that have turned their back on God. So, Lord, we just ask right now for those that are receiving Christ and asking you to take over their life, that you'd respond. Let them know and watch what they do and show, show them somehow that they are on the right road with you. Touch their lives, those that are turning their lives around for your glory. And I give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for this family that come on here. And I ask you to respond, make your comments. Like me and subscribe. Tell, send this to your friends, please. They all need to get this information. I want not for anyone to be left behind. He's coming very soon. He's coming very soon. It might be two years, one year, but I know between now and five years, he's coming for sure. I know that. We all know it in our heart, those of us that love God. It can, it, it's just gotten so bad. But thank goodness our government, we're getting a reprieve. God has given us a chance because of the prayers of the saints. We have a work to do with the short time we have left because things are going to change fast. God bless you. I love you. I hope you've been touched. I hope you've been touched and take this serious in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, like, touch, you know, subscribe, like, and make your comments. This keeps me on the algorithm. I don't say this enough. I'm going to start saying it all the time. Please like, comment, subscribe. It's vital or I won't be out. I won't be out where I should be to minister, and that's what I have to do for the Lord. Love you. Bye.